Pour le monde des religions, nous avons obtenu un entretien exclusif avec le 17e Karmapa qui vient en France pour la première fois. Fabrice Midal, bonjour. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire quelques mots sur qui est le Karmapa Alors, le Karmapa, c'est vraiment une des figures centrales du bouddhisme tibétain. En fait, dans le bouddhisme tibétain, il y a quatre écoles. On connaît surtout l'école Gelugpa, auquel appartient le Dalai Lama. Et l'autre grande école, c'est l'école des Karmakagyu, dont le Karmapa est à la tête. Et alors c'est très très important, le 10e Karmapa a un rôle d'autant plus important que, historiquement, la lignée Karmakagyu, auquel appartient le, donc, le Karmapa, est la lignée, l'école qui s'est le plus engagée à transmettre la, la méditation et le bouddhisme hors du monde tibétain. Et presque tous les premiers maîtres qui sont venus en Occident dans les années 60-70 étaient, venaient de cette, de, de cette, de cette école-là, qui est une école qui met vraiment l'accent sur la méditation et euh, la rencontre avec les difficultés, euh, essayer de, de, de rencontrer les difficultés pour les, pour les transmuter. D'autres écoles étant peut-être plus intellectuelles, euh, mettant plus l'accent sur l'étude, comme, comme l'école Gelugpa. Alors il se trouve que historiquement, peut-être pour cet accent-là, c'est cette école qui, qui s'est d'abord développée partout en Occident et le, pré le, le prédécesseur du 16e Karmapa, le 16e Karmapa, a joué un rôle mais absolument fondateur que les gens ne savent plus vraiment forcément aujourd'hui. Mais la plupart des centres bouddhistes qui existent en Occident ont souvent été fondés par le 16e Karmapa ou par des gens qui ont rencontré le 16e Karmapa. Et puis, à sa disparition, il y a eu comme une sorte de, de, de grand vide et, 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 et d'arrêt euh, enfin de grandes villes plutôt, parce qu'Arès, il a quand même laissé beaucoup de, 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 de gens qui l'avaient formé, mais il y avait quand même un arrêt parce que il, il, le, le, le Karmapa euh, était vraiment, euh, avait vraiment une capacité, à, par sa présence, à montrer le cœur de la tradition bouddhiste. Donc le, le 17e Karmapa euh, était, était attendu avec beaucoup d'intensité, de, 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 enfin beaucoup de curiosité je dirais, et le fait que le Dieu Karpa a eu une éducation, il a été assez protégé pendant les premières années de sa vie, et il a vraiment pu recevoir une éducation traditionnelle avec une grande solidité, ce qui est une assez grande chance, et lui permet d'avoir un regard à la fois de connaître évidemment bien l'Occident, enfin, la, la modernité qui, 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 ample sur, qui, qui, qui vient dans toute la surface de la Terre, et en même temps d'avoir une compréhension très profonde, traditionnelle, tout en étant un, un tout jeune homme. Quel âge a le 17e Karmapa 31 ans. Donc il est vraiment dans l'âge de la. Dans, dans un âge absolument euh, assez, assez magnifique. Et, et, et personnellement, moi, ce qui me touche beaucoup chez, chez, chez ce jeune homme, c'est euh, euh, la capacité qu'il a d'être assez radical. C'est-à-dire, il y a vraiment, de temps en temps, on a. Euh, bon, là, c'est vraiment, je parle un peu personnellement, mais des fois, on a. Un, un certain discours spirituel un peu, un peu gentillet, euh, euh, qu'on comprend, qui part de bons sentiments, mais, mais qui émousse un peu la, la radicalité d'un du, engagement. Et ce qui est assez étonnant, c'est de voir chez ce jeune homme de 31 ans une telle radicalité, une vraie bonne ouverture d'esprit, ouverture sur les autres, ouverture sur le monde, mais inséparable aussi d'une certaine radicalité qui, je trouve, euh, fait vraiment du bien et... et et vraiment porteur d'espérance pour euh, l'avenir du, du bouddhisme. Et de la méditation, puisque euh, cette radicalité, euh, Fabrice Midal, c'est ce qui protégera, c'est ce qui pourrait protéger la méditation de, de devenir un produit de consommation de plus, un outil de plus. Ça, euh... Oui, alors ça c'est évidemment, là vous parlez d'un sujet qui est un peu presque mon, mon, mon obsession. Je suis vraiment très inquiet d'un développement de la méditation qui perdrait tout sens éthique et qui donnerait juste une sorte d'une pure technique pour être encore plus performant dans une société obsédée par la performance, qui nous rendrait juste de meilleurs consommateurs dans une société obsédée par la consommation. Et je trouve que c'est intéressant de ce point de vue-là, qu'on soit bouddhiste ou qu'on ne soit pas bouddhiste, d'entendre quelqu'un qui ramène la méditation dans une dimension plus ample, qui ramène la dimension dans une dimension qu'on peut dire spirituelle, mais qu'on peut dire aussi profondément éthique. Et que là, il y a une responsabilité des religions et je crois que c'est sans doute une des vertus du monde de religion de, de le souligner, il y a une vertu des religions aussi de garder un aspect un peu plus profond qui vise à une véritable transformation de, de l'homme et de la société. Et, 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 et c'est pour ça que euh, 
pour moi, même si j'enseigne je, je, la médecine d'un point de vue laïque, je trouve toujours très, très intéressant de mettre à l'écoute de grandes personnalités de la tradition euh, bouddhique, par exemple, pour vraiment, euh, parce que ça, ça, ça aide vraiment à, à retrouver vraiment le, le, la source profonde de la méditation et, et non seulement sa dimension éthique, mais on pourrait dire aussi la capacité qu'elle a de, pro, de nous transformer en profondeur. Et je crois que c'est une, une des grandes forces de, de la parole du XVIIe Carapa de réussir à, à montrer ça et à incarner ça. His Holiness, uh, would you mind to answer some uh, question for Le Monde des Religions? Yes. How meditation uh, can, can uh, help us uh, to love our world? A relaxation is you to relax your mind and also sort of uh, you can taste at the, that moment. Uh, that's why I think his meditation let uh, let you sort of to sort of understand what's happening in at the moment. So that lots of things actually in the our life, lots of very Uh, you can say it's precious or very amazing things happening every day, uh, such as like, a, like breathing, we are always breathing. But, uh, we, but breathing is too normal, too normal for us. It's nothing kind of special. But once we have one meditation called breathing meditation, Uh, that means like you, you know, relax your mind on the breathing, then, you know, aware you are breathing, and then means, the, and also you can just kind of taste that, the moment, 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 moment. I, I think similar situation because the, The natural environment also sometimes where everything is take, take for granted, but we really sometimes it's not really sort of you know relax and just taste natural beauty and just kind of um, live with nature or maybe you can say it just be the na be with nature. Uh, I think. You, Meditation can help how to cherish or how to sort of, um, yeah, how to cherish the world. You, you spoke about breathing meditation. Yeah. Is there uh, any other uh, practices uh, to increase our love, our compassion, our respect for the world? Yes. Actually, we have lots of uh, sort of Uh, we call it it's visualization or maybe you can say it's meditation kind of imagination uh, so that we can increase our life and love and compassion and i think because sometimes our mind is it's uh, you know even though we human beings have incredible sort of intelligent but that only use we some uh, oh, most of the time we only use for like uh, some time for yourself or so or maybe in a few just a few people mm -hmm. if we can expand or maybe we can say open our mind so that we can sort of um, have bigger picture so that we can cherish everybody every living Uh, living creature or li all the sentient beings. That's why we do have this kind of sort of uh, training and meditation so that uh, maybe, for example, maybe a mother is a sort of uh, it's symbol of love and compassion. We will start from mother, your mother, then You think every sentient beings, or maybe every living, every sentient beings is like your mother. 
because uh, we are living in an interdependent world. Everybody's kind of helping each other, or maybe you can say it's everybody is mm, <coughs> dependent each other. Uh, we should feel gratitude and uh, cherish for all the session beings. Yeah. Yeah. You used to say all is related. I think if we, uh, Buddhism, talking about this selflessness, uh, the self is not selflessness means self self self, self self is not existing i think that means you, you know you should sort of you come you know maybe just you know just try you are this kind of very independent self very uh, selfish mind maybe you just just try that you should have sort of space for sort of accept you mind should have bigger space to accept every sort of session beings not just you and your family or your friends that's why I think self selflessness means like a, maybe you put your on a sort of bigger sort of in a position not just like very small narrow how to say, in the environment, maybe you should have bigger sort of understanding. And so that every sentient beings, <coughs> maybe, maybe we can say it's sometimes we're talking about my and me, like, you know, we think it's a very long distance. Actually, we don't have that sort of world has become smaller. Everything is let's close to each other, and what things I do, it will affect other people, other people's, and uh, you know, motivation and action also affects us. That that's why we should sort of um, feel responsible for those, you know, your action, what do you do, what do you think, maybe. Seems that Buddhist uh, meditations uh, learn to us to uh, to be more um, mindfulness, of mm -hmm. course, but more delicate, mm -hmm. more um, delicate, respectful yeah. Yeah. with each uh, little each yes. uh, little thing, each yeah. mm -hmm. little moment. Mm -hmm. Equally, it's important. It's not like a, we human being. We have this incredible intelligence. That's why we are the sort of top species or maybe we have the sort of right to do everything what we want to do I think it's not like that maybe everybody all sentient beings have it's equally important um, and we can't say this elephant his body is bigger that's why it's it's important than and summary uh, because it's, it's the ant's body is small, but body can have you know big and small. But life, you can't say it's big and small. Life, it's all it's important. That's why we should sort of try our best to respect all the living sentient beings, and and also like uh, uh, we should think of you know uh, you become the service of all sentient beings, something this kind of ideas. Yeah. Thank you. And um, what is the, the, the role of Buddhism uh, uh, regarding to climate climate change? Mm, climate change? Yeah. Well, mm. I think uh, climate change or this uh, environmental disaster is it's lots of them it's man-made disaster that's why we we should uh, control our greed you know human desire desire and greed but sometime we know the climbing scientists and also econo ecology scientists they have lots of sort of report and lots of information um, and 
lots of measurement, lots of numbers. But sometimes measuring numbers is not enough to change people's motivation. And that's why sometimes it's, <coughs> uh, it's important to sort of, in this time, it's important to sort of spiritual leader and scientist work together so that we can have more sort of <coughs> have some sort of uh, real we can take some step so that uh, we can protect the natural environment and climate change i think it's motivation sometimes the information it's only you know keeping your brain but it's not enough to sort of transform your um, uh, heart and mind. What do you think uh, about uh, uh, this success of what we call mindfulness yeah. here in the West? Mm -hmm. I think uh, some of the, my f mm, scientist friends, they still do lots of research. Um, and especially in Amer America, they're doing lots of research about this meditation, how meditation change our sort of health and, and also I think it will take some time. I think sometimes it uh, takes some time. If uh, the, their plan is if meditation is that sort of uh, much kind of effect, e effective, then uh, they will recommend to the government so that Maybe get government in the, in the schools and and also police station and lots of you know places. Maybe they can sort of hospital. yeah hospital. Then they can set up some kind of meditation. It's more contempt contempt contemplation. Cont contemplative meditation. It's not nothing is really related to Buddhism, but it's. Uh, but it also can be a sort of uh, meditation so that everybody can um, get the sort of benefit. Mm -hmm. yes. But take some time. You said um, that is what is important for changing climate is uh, changing the motivation. Yeah. And what can you say that could help people to change their motivation? <clears throat> well, I think change motivation is not... A, because we surrounded by all this, you know, we are living in a consumerism. Uh, you know, consumer is become a world religion, kind of <laughs> universal belief. Mm -hmm. And everything what we see, I think all sort of we are manipulating our, you know, mind, uh, our brain. So that I think it's to change our sort of motivation. It's uh, not that easy, but but that not means we can't try. We can try that because sometimes we should make uh, make difference between what we want and what we need. Uh, because you know what we want, we want everything. Yeah, but what we need maybe it's not everything. <laughs> just just kind of maybe few uh, less things. That's why we should have this kind of because this is human greed is no limitation, you know. But natural resource we have <coughs> have limit. Um, if we like live like this kind of consumer three or four. Planet Earth, it's not enough. Yeah. Uh, that's Even eight, ten. eight, <laughs> ten, hundreds. That's why we should control our sort of greed. To control our greed, it seems very control. difficult. I think containment. Sometimes we are talking about this meditation. Sometimes it's maybe not necessary to have this kind of very maybe it's happiness. What we want is happiness, you know? You know, material wealth, material development, it's, it's uh, of course, we, it's helping us, but it's 
not really bring us the sort of uh, the actual happiness because what more what we get got then we will want more you know that's why I think uh, these uh, you know meditation and breathe I think also sometimes good to sort of uh, good to try because when you focus your breathe then you will know yeah, you know breathing oxygen is not one time it's you need to sort of continually breathing that sort of and also the oxygen is not from your side it's you are not, not you are carrying with you but it's from outside natural world and uh, that condition is always there and this kind of I think it's kind of amazing and it's, you can feel this is a very amazing sort of you are in this amazing situation uh, that's why I think then you can feel some contentment or you think oh actually I'm it's always with happiness yeah you mentioned also that uh, how to bring a little bit more love and compassion mm -hmm. could you tell us how to do it because a lot of people feel they wish to have more love but they don't know how to do it it mm. seems very difficult the scientist telling us that the empathy and sympathy is hardwired like means it's uh, born with us you know but the sad thing is we can turn off we can sort of switch off our this kind of sympathy and empathy because maybe the, the environment that we grown up or maybe that is not supporting that much sort of sympathy and empathy like uh, so some you know same like this we have everybody have this human have this language skill you can speak but if you grown up very you know very karsodaji solitude solitude area nobody's there then you can't speak you know human language uh, similar sort of situation i think the environment and also this um the family it's supporting sympathy and empathy and even you can use the the name of this compassion and sympathy daily li daily life if you you can sort of use that words also um, make difference uh, and I think it really is sort of um, maybe first you should sort of cherish yourself you should sort of have sort of uh, sort of compassion or maybe sympathy with yourself then you can sort of uh, you can, uh, transfer that transfer that to other sentient beings so that gradually it's uh, we should respect everybody have um, desire to get happiness and free from suffering we should respect that very common sort of wishes um, so that we should uh, ready for if we got any chance we're ready to help other beings the success of meditation is in one sense wonderful because it brings meditation to many people. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I'm worried sometimes that it becomes just a technique and the ethics yeah. will be lost mm -hmm. and there will be no more ethics and that yeah. will not help so much the world. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, you could imagine someone learn just meditation yeah. to kill more people and yeah. to become more focused that will yeah. not bring... Yeah. What yeah, do you I say think I, I heard military is there they're learning meditation to sort of concentrate how to kill people like they can they can concentrate more than they can kill more people or <laughs> maybe something this kind but I think 
it's possible because everything became these days everything became commercialized you know like yoga uh, yoga is used to be sort of very special you know spiritual sort of practice it's very secret practice now it's become uh, more or less like a, fitness. Fitness, fitness, fitness and uh, you know it's lost you know traditional value it also can be like meditation also can be like that it's become more everybody's just like a uh, temporal realization temporal sort of we are calling this sp spiritual massage or uh, like you know you feel some sometimes you feel some sort of uncomfortable, then you do some meditation, you go to the sort of <coughs> spiritual resort, maybe do some spiritual massage or meditation. That's all. But the, med the traditional medit meditation is not that. Like, it's not really, sometimes it's maybe it's not that comfortable, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you should going through some lots of hardships and uh, facing lots of difficulties. So that r really brings this, you know, not just like comfortable, but it's m more like encouragement and also realization, uh, some wisdom. I think maybe if meditation has become, uh, uh, you know, everybody is accepting meditation, then I think it can be like, you know, commercialized. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much.